I've got some more examples for you from Lesson 7 of Multiplying and Dividing Fractions. And now I'm going to show you how to write them into the answer sheet for the standard grid. And if you've missed any previous videos, the links are in this description. Now, I've mentioned this before. You're going to have some of the problems on the GED math test where you're going to have to write in one answer into a grid like this. It's for one answer. You can write the fraction in up here using one of these as a slash mark for the fraction bar. We write the numbers in, okay? You actually fill in the circle for the slash bar, all right? When we get to decimals in Lesson 8, we're going to use these dots, okay? And we fill in the number bubbles. If we have one half, we have a one for a numerator, we have our fraction bar, and then the two for the denominator, we have to write in a 1 and then the slash for the fraction bar and then the 2. We fill in the circle for the 1, we fill in the circle for the slash, and the circle for the 2. And each part of the fraction gets its own column and circle to fill. If it's left blank, we leave the circles blank. Okay? We have to remember to keep improper fractions as improper and convert mixed numbers into improper fractions because the answer grid can't accept mixed numbers. You cannot write a mixed number in these standard grids, okay? If we have an answer of one and a half, we have to have it as three halves. We multiply the whole number by the denominator and add the numerator. So we got two plus one is three. We keep that denominator. We have three halves, okay? We write the three, the slash, the two. We fill in the correct circles, okay? If we have five and a half, we multiply the 5 times the denominator 2 to get a 10. We add that one numerator, and we have 11 halves. We keep that denominator. We write it into this as 11 halves. You cannot write it in as 5 and a half. It'll be marked wrong. So be ashamed that you have the right answer, but you didn't fill in the grid correctly, so you get it marked wrong, and it could be the one that helped you pass the math test. Remember to leave any unused columns blank, okay? So if there's nothing here, we're going to use it blank. Leave it blank, okay? So here's our first problem. A piece of rope is 3 and 9 sixteenths feet long. If you cut off 1 and 1, one and one fourth feet, how many feet are left? So we need to find a difference. It says how many are left. That tells us we need to do subtraction. So we have 3 and 9 sixteenths, and we need to take away 1 and 1 fourth, but they're unlike fractions. They have different denominators. So we need to find a multiple that these denominators can meet at. And for the denominator 16, we have 16 times 1 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32, 16 times 3 is 48. For the 4 denominator, we have 4, 8, 12, 16. We can see they can meet at 16. So this one just slides over because he's already at 16. So we put the 3 and 9 16 here, and the 4 needs to be multiplied by a 4 to become the 16. The 1 gets jealous. It wants to be multiplied by 4, so we have 4 sixteenths for our fraction. We have 1 and 4 sixteenths. Now we can have the 9 and take away the 4 and get a 5 sixteenths. We do the 3 minus the 1 and get a 2, because remember it's subtraction. We have 2 and 5 sixteenths as our answer, but we cannot write that into the grid. It's a mixed number. We have to convert this to an improper fraction. 2 times 16 is 32 plus 5 is 37, and we keep it over that denominator. We have 37 sixteenths, and that's how we fill in the grid. The 3, the 7, the slash, the 1, the 6, and we fill in those circles. Even for the slash, it gets the circle filled in. See? All right, let's try another one. Bob cuts a piece of rope that is 3 and 3 fourths feet long into three pieces. How long is each piece? Okay, so now we need to split the rope into three equal parts. So that means we're doing division. We do the 3 and 3 fourths divided by 3. We turn it into an improper fraction. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15. Over that denominator, we have 15 fourths. We can write the 3 as a fraction by putting a 1 as a denominator. And we change that division sign into a multiplication sign and flip him around to his reciprocal, don't we? So it's going to be one-third. Now we can just multiply straight across, okay? 15 times 1 is 15, and 4 times 3 is 12. Now, it's an improper fraction, but if you list this in your answer grid as the answer, it's going to be marked wrong. 
because it can be reduced. We can divide both the numerator and denominator by a 3 and get a 5 fourths. Now it's reduced as far as it can go. We keep it as 5 fourths and write a 5, a slash, and a 4. We fill in the 5 circle, the slash circle, and the 4 circle, leave the rest of them blank. So be careful if your improper fraction can be reduced, okay? Just really watch that, all right? It might have been easier if we did cross canceling here. We have a 3 and a 15. We could have done there's one 3 here and there's five threes here, and that would have given us five times one is five, and four times one is four, and we could have gone quicker without having to reduce this, see? So cross-canceling can help you, and if you've missed that, you need to look in the description of this video or go into the GED Math playlist and look for the, chap the Lesson 7 videos where we talked about this, okay? You shouldn't miss any of these lessons because every single one of them is going to help make sure you're a success on the GED math test. And this one says a map scale shows half inch equals three miles in actual distance. If a distance on the map is one and one fourth inches, what's the actual distance? So if we look at this from a real basic point of view, if a half inch is three miles, then a whole inch must be six, right? But we need not just one inch, we need one and one fourth inches to find the actual distance. So what we can do is we can take this one and one fourth and divide it by that half, come up with an answer, a quotient, and then multiply it by that three. And that's what we're going to do, okay? So we have the one and one fourth divided by the half, and that's going to give us five fourths divided by one half. We turn this into an improper fraction. One times four is four, plus the one is five, five fourths. Now, we change this to a multiplication sign, and we flip him around and make him a two over a one. Now we can see that we have one two here and two twos here, so we can cross cancel. We can make that a one and that a two, so when we do five times one, we get five, and two times one is two, we get five halves. Now we can multiply it by that three miles. We can write it as a 3 over a 1 to make it easier to multiply straight across, and we get 15 over 2, or 15 halves. And that is how we're going to write it into the answer grid. We're going to write a 1, a 5, a slash, and a 2. You cannot write a mixed number, okay? So it's got to be kept as an improper fraction. Just make sure it's reduced, okay? All right, I got one more for you. It's 2 and 2 fifth miles from Tala's house to the store, and one and three-fourths times that far to her grandmother's house. So how many miles is it from her house to her grandmother's? Now it tells us right here it's times. So we already know. We're going to multiply these two together. We have two and two-fifths times one and three-fourths. This can be turned into two times five is ten, eleven twelve-fifths, and this is one times four is four, five, six, seven-fourths, and we have a 4 here and a 12 here. There's one 4 here, so we cross it out and make a 1. And there's three 4s here, so we cross it out and make it a 3. It's how many 4s are here, okay? Now we can do 3 times 7 is 21 over 5 times 1 is 5. We keep this as an improper fraction. It's reduced as far as we can go. We know from the cross-canceling. And we write a 2, a 1, a slash, and a 5. And fill in the correct circles for that, including the slash. And that's our answer. Okay? Now, I know this can be confusing, so if you watch it a second time, that's no big deal. Okay? But you should be now ready to do that skill focus on page 99. And it actually has examples for you to do. All right? When you're finished with that, if you feel good about it, you can do that mini test on pages 100 through 103 for lessons 5, 6, and 7. But read the instructions. It says you've only got 30 minutes. So look at the clock. And, or if you have a timer, set a timer for 30 minutes to see how many you can answer in that 30 minutes, because that is going to give you a good judge of how you're going to do on the GED test, okay? You want to see how many you can answer in the 30 minutes allotted, all right? Our next video is understanding decimals, and we're finally going to get into decimals, okay? And if you need more help, 
with uh, fractions, watch all of Lesson 6 and 7's videos in this playlist. They should be very helpful. I gave you a lot of examples of problems that are just like the problems in the GED test, okay? And if you need more help with these answer grids, I made a video, 3C and 6G, where we learned about filling these in, okay? You want to make sure you fill these in correctly and you know exactly what you're doing with these answer grids. I would hate for you to not pass the test when you had the right answer because you didn't fill the grid in correctly, all right? It's so important to understand it. I hope you do well in the skill focus, and I hope you do well in the mini test. I hope you get as a lot of them answered, or all of them, okay? And I'll see you at decimals. Bye.